and this seemingly maniacally happy treasurer of New South Wales about to announce a very exciting funding initiative on cars. Uh, today I want to announce that a thousand extra electric vehicles will hit New South Wales roads uh, thanks to the $105 million uh, commitment uh, as part of the EV fleet incentive program being delivered by the Liberal National Government. The Liberal National Government is delivering New South Wales residents paying $100,000 per car for a thousand cars. We're helping 20 organisations to electrify their fleets as part of the second round of the incentive program. And those thousand cars are being given, look at the bottom there, these are grants to fleet owners, which obviously would have to be large companies. They've obviously made the decision that they're not going to buy them to affect the climate somehow, if that's even possible. Because that's not their responsibility, that's the exclusive responsibility of New South Wales residents as far as this scheme goes. So the whole outcome of this scheme is to replace a thousand petrol cars with a thousand electric cars. Well, why not just do it like a lotto and put all the New South Wales residents into the drawer and they might get one of these thousand cars. Now, the majority of that funding is going to rideshare and vehicle subscription firms. So the majority, not all of it, obviously some has been set aside for, for he's not going to mention here, has gone to, what is that, Uber? Or t taxi drivers? I mean, let's get these cars and why is it the responsibility of New South Wales residents to help their businesses? Is, is it unprofitable to, to buy these cars and then run people around in them? And the good news is there is an avenue. It's very slim for New South Wales residents to be able to benefit from collectively paying 100000 bucks per car and giving it to businesses. As industry experts said, the discounts, so what, they just discount, so they're actually worth more than $100,000 per car. <laughs> but, but they stopped, look, we can't be crazy, we can't buy the whole thing for them, just 100000 And it would ultimately benefit consumers, ultimately, because the new cars would filter down to Australia's second vehicle market. Oh, we get something. <laughs> now, think about how ludicrous this is. So, collectively, you have us to buy these cars, and the people that get them, they don't have to, like, grant them back when they're finished with them. They get to sell them back to the people who pay for them in the first place. Do they have to? Can they just sell them straight away? Can they just give it a thousand bucks? <laughs> Is there any restrictions on where they sell them and who they can sell them to to make sure you have residents at least get a chance to buy something they've already paid for? <laughs> or, or if it's, say, discount, or you're going to have Queenslanders and Victorians coming up to pickles, or like they're online, they might just buy them and transfer them out of the state. <laughs> uh, the first two rounds are, of support are expected to boost EV registrations by more than 10% here in New South Wales. Yeah, more than 10% means 10.01%. 10 so there's probably about 10,000 electric vehicles. There's going to be now 11,000. It's costed us. A hundred million bucks. And round three is now open as we fast track the state's uh, electric vehicle fleet of the future. <laughs> this is all part of the New South Wales government's $633 million electric vehicle strategy. 633? Couldn't have been 632? So that's 6,300 all up, an extra 5,300 on top of the 1,000. And granting them to business. So the 1,000, you said, are going to, well, I didn't say exactly who, but hinted that it was Uber and taxis, and that's not all of us, it's some of them. So the other roughly 5,300, it's actually a bidding process and here's the eligibility. So this is in rideshare now, it says individual fleets must operate a fleet at least 10 vehicles in New South Wales to support your organisation's purposes. Well, that rules out small businesses. Let's say you got nine, well, no, you can't have them. Why that cut off is ultimately all they're trying to do is replace petrol cars with electric cars. Eligible organisations include, but are not limited to. So that means but any, anyone can get one as long as you've got more than 10, as long as you're big enough. Businesses, local council, and non government organisations. Well, this was a major bank in New Zealand back in 2018. So obviously, Westpac, they're keen on, on electric vehicles and they qualify. They definitely have more than 10 and they're a business. So I'd imagine, you know, they might throw the hat into the ring for some of these 5,300 cars on top of the rideshare ones. And they don't explain the bidding in too great a detail from what I can draw from it is that it's a reverse auction in that they the hundred thousand dollars is there and car companies bid to sell their car to the corporations that got the grants, got the hundred thousand from the New South Wales residents. So go and have a look at it yourself, see if you can work it out better than me. But I think the whole reason behind making out like it's all commercial 
uh, even though it's a grant. Is it ordinary they'd have to publish the grants? Okay, well, who got this money? We don't want them to have it. Well, because it's done like this, I think they're going to try and hide who got the $100,000 under commercial in confidence. There was a Q&A question I found quite interesting. Can they be used for personal use? Look at the second paragraph. Of course you can't. This is harking back. Why don't they just do it as a lottery? Well, that means, say, someone from a poorer part of the outskirts of Sydney is going to get a $100,000 car, whereas for their personal use, whereas, you know, uh, big corporation executives, you know, their wives might need a car. Which is about ensuring that New South Wales is the most affordable place uh, to own and drive an electric vehicle. Now, what he should have added in there to make it more accurate was that it's the cheapest place to drive an electric vehicle for 0.105% of the population when you divide the 6,300 cars by the number of registrations. In other words, 99.895% it won't be cheaper. If you're not a corporation with more than 10 cars, you've got to stump up the $100,000 from your private funds. Well, can New South Wales residents really afford it? This was in March 2021, a while ago. It's probably worse now. The state governments are in their unprecedented debt. And here's the graph. I mean, look at Victoria. Go, hey, Victoria, what's going on down there? You've got bloody gold paved roads, chandeliers hanging up in libraries, public toilet concierges handing out towels. Oh, this would be more realistic. <laughs> God, you're spending a lot of money. And you say, well, is up there. Hey, well, over $55 billion in debt. Now, to put that in perspective, the debt had dropped it back from 1995 to $12 billion to $5 billion in 2002 under a Labor government while we had the Olympics. So it was only $5 billion. So how does that compare now? 2021 at least. And it just doesn't look good. I mean, can we really... I mean, if that was $60 billion in the black... Yeah, take take some money, go go West Back or Commonwealth Bank, whoever's going to get these cars. But we can't really afford it right now. And in fact, we borrow the money off the banking system, so they'll be getting interest as well as the cars. Now, while he didn't mention that these grants, I can't stop looking at that grants down in the bottom left-hand corner to turbocharge. <laughs> yeah, point. Oh, God, there's so much wrong with this whole thing. But even though he didn't mention climate in this whole thing, that was the backstory. Well, it's got nothing to do with climate. That's why he didn't mention it. But it's always inferred. But this is why he didn't mention it. Five inconvenient facts about electric cars that politicians just don't understand. Physicists like Mark Mills of the Manhattan Institute do understand. Electric cars are not all that green. But most of America's electricity comes from fossil fuels, natural gas, and coal. Just 12% comes from wind and solar. You have to mine somewhere on Earth 500,000 pounds of minerals and rock to make one battery. If you're worried about carbon dioxide, the electric vehicle is emitted 10 to 20 tons of carbon dioxide before it even gets to your driveway, before you drive the first mile and plug it in the first time. Carbon dioxide produced by the mining and the manufacturing and the shipping. Exactly. Volkswagen published an honest study. They point out that the first 60,000 miles or so or you're driving an electric vehicle, that electric vehicle will have emitted more carbon dioxide than if you just drove a conventional vehicle in the first place. They mentioned the total cost of ownership purely for the to standardize the bidding process, but shorter terms can be selected for two years if you know, individual fleet managers have different models. Now, 60,000 miles is about 100,000 kilometres. So if you haven't got, gone ahead as far as carbon emissions go by the time you reach 100,000, then for the turn that the people that got granted these cars have had it, <laughs> there's been no effect on the emissions. And we don't even know if that affects the climate. It probably doesn't. But most people, let's just say it does. Let's just say everything they say about climate. It's still for the term that the, of this grant. They'll get the only benefit comes back to well after that time, and it gets sold to the public. That's it. We can see where this is going. It's all about corporate welfare, money from the public funds straight to corporations. Very select few. And the reason for his fake Cheshire grin is that he's implying he's trying to help in the climate fight. The real reason for his grin is that he's on the other side and it's their side that's stealing our money and he's very happy. He's letting them all know, look how happy I am. And they're all back in their board room. He's going, oh, yeah. Yep, he's happy. We're happy. You said, well, it's perhaps not so happy. All right, that is it for this one.